the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, hear him. Glory to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man has risen, had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, again, it is good to be here with you, and I thank Father Glenn and all of you for allowing us to have this mission appeal here. I think there are moments when we think, oh great, here comes the great guilt factor, perfect for the time of Lent, to squeeze us a little bit more, and there are great needs financially for the missions. But the mission appeals are also a way for us as a church, a universal church, a global church, to help all of our faithful understand how the other faithful live in community. My name is Father Tom Eckert. I'm a Holy Cross priest ordained in 2003, and I spent the last nine years of my ministry at a, a highly Hispanic parish in uh, in Goodyear, Arizona. I began my time as director of the Holy Cross Mission Center just in July, and so I am learning a lot. So what I share with you, some of the bare bones of what I know, but I did also have the wonderful experience as a seminarian of spending two years in our Holy Cross sites in Lima, Peru, and in Santiago, Chile as well. So those things in particular, I, I have been there and I do know what I'm talking about. But we are here in this time of Lent, here in this time when we are invited to enter into a deeper penance and a recognition of those times when we have sinned and failed in living the gospel. Those sacrifices we are asked to make in the Lenten practices of prayer and fasting, and almsgiving, these are small sacrifices that are meant to help us form habits of sacrifice in our life. These sacrifices, small and great, we then learn how to unite those with the great sacrifice Christ made for us. Again, this Lent, this time of Lent is very important. And we hear in our first reading the great sacrifice that Abraham was asked to make the sacrifice of his only son, his beloved son. He was put to the test by God to see how strong his faith was. And there are moments in our own lives when we wonder and look up to God and say, are you testing me? Is this, is this a test of some sort? Desperately seeking, what is the right answer here? I need the wisdom of Solomon, please. 
But Abraham chose wisely. He trusted in God. He was willing to do whatever God asked of him, and he passed that test. His trust in God won great favor for him. In the Gospel today, we hear this familiar story of the transfiguration of Jesus. Before the very eyes of the disciples, Jesus was transformed completely. Just imagine, and I I always love, I'm the youngest of 14 children, so I can only imagine all the hours my mom, who is now 90, spent scrubbing stains out, right? Oh my goodness. Just imagine she, they were able to, or in the trans, transfiguration, the cloth was bleached whiter than any fuller could have gotten that fabric. My mom would have liked a little bit of that over the many years of raising 14 kids. But Christ was transformed before the very eyes of the disciples, completely transformed by God. We are called to that as well in these Lenten practices, being transformed little by little. But it's always a process for us. And each Sunday when we are sent forth, there is a missio, a sending forth, kind of that blessing and sending. We are to go into the world to be the representatives and ambassadors for God in this world to help little by little transform our family, transform our community, transform the hearts of those around us. And that's what the founder of the Congregation of Holy Cross desired. Way back in 1837 in France, when he pulled together this group of brothers and auxiliary priests to be able to educate the minds and the hearts post-French Revolution of all the faithful, he wanted God to be known and loved and served. And so he sent people forth. We are now in 16 different countries. In the very earliest of years, in the 1840s, he sent people to Russia and Poland and Algeria, places we are not anymore, but then also places where these missions stuck. Even that distant, strange land of the United States, down the Ohio River, and then up through Evansville and Vincennes to South Bend. In Bangladesh, we have been there as Holy Cross missionaries since 1853, almost 170 years of serving in a land that other people did not want to go to and could not survive, a land where even currently 0.01% are Christian in a Muslim land, and 0.002% are Catholic. And we've been there for 170 years serving that Catholic community to make sure that God is known, loved, and served in the hearts of the faithful. And Holy Cross around the world, we work in churches and build them. We build schools and work in them and medical clinics and just anything else that the communities need that can bring them a better life and closer to God. We do those things. Just imagine in areas of the world like Bangladesh and East Africa, where we serve in Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. Kenya. Also in Haiti, for $300. $300 covers an entire year of tuition, of living expenses, because many can't travel back and forth, so they live on site at the school. So housing and meals, Uniforms or clothing for an entire year for a student, $300. Now, as a pastor with a school, I would not have wanted to make that statement when we announced the tuition increase in any given year, but it's a very different place in Bangladesh and East Africa and Haiti where we can do so much with so little. I think, as I was saying before, that the true meaning of this mission appeal isn't about that guilt that should exact us to to give a little bit more in this moment, although giving is very important for our work. But it's to aid all of the faithful in thinking about our Catholic Church globally. What are we like? We understand what things are like. Me from my hometown in Huntington, Indiana, 
For all of you here in South Bend, and I understand a bit more in Arizona since I served there as a pastor, but, but globally, and thinking about our church inclusively, and thinking about the love of God that enters the hearts of all the faithful around the world. So today's appeal is meant to remind each of us of our brothers and sisters around the world, many who suffer great poverty, and to invite you to consider supporting the work that's being done to impact their lives, to bring the word of God to them, to transform their situations as well. Again, that transformation, that transfiguration that was witnessed by the disciples completely transformed. So I'm just thinking of our missions. When, when a school is built, does that solve all of the problems of the community right away? Absolutely not. It's a process. But educating the minds and hearts of those children starts that process. Bringing faith to them starts that process. Christ was transfigured in one fell swoop immediately, but our transformation and society's transformation takes more time, takes great love, takes those small habits, and takes gifts as well. Those communities that are impacted are transformed little by little in our work in Holy Cross. So your contributions will go a long way in the work of the Congregation of the Holy Cross. Again, as Father Glenn said, very much separate from the coffers of the university. Our work, the Holy Cross Mission Center, was started specifically in 1923, specifically for the work in Bangladesh. And we have grown and grown and grown our ministries throughout the world. So your contributions go a long way to help provide, for example, prenatal care and infant care at Brother Andre Medical Center in Tanzania. They help to educate orphaned girls, young women, at the St. Marianne Cope Young Women's Education Project in Bangladesh, and provide services for young children with disabilities in a highly impoverished area near Lima, Peru, where, for the first time for many of them, they're treated with that dignity and respect as a child of God. And these are just a few of the places where Holy Cross works to educate the minds and the hearts and to care for those who are most vulnerable. And we all know this past year through COVID has provided even more and greater need and situations that are far more dire than they once had been. And so we continue to see that need, and communities that depended upon tuition are not seeing that as classes are either online or more likely just delayed or postponed. And so there is that lack of local income, which is greater work and need for our mission center as well to help care for them in health care, providing food and meals, education and tuition. A great example of the things that we can do in Peru, just outside of Lima, in the area where I lived for about half of a year and helped teach in the school that we have there, there was a clinic that was started and they were doing blood tests for the public to see um, not only for COVID, but mainly for COVID. And they were doing these manual, in Spanish, toma de muestras, the blood test. But the way that they were doing it, they were only 25% accurate. What good does that do? 25% accuracy in giving people this blood test. And so through the mission center and through generous donations, we were able to help them buy a machine that now they have 99% accuracy in their blood tests at this clinic in this poverty stricken area. In Bangladesh, we were recently able to help a small school community build a cow shed and a pig shed. Now, in Huntington, I grew up on a farm. We didn't farm crops, but we had cows and pigs and chickens. And, you know, you have to raise a lot of things to feed 14 kids for so long. And so we knew what it was like to get up at 5 in the morning and go out and feed all the animals before school. Well. They desire to teach their students 
how to care for livestock, because if they know how to do that, then their next step in life, they can have a cow or they can have a pig and they can grow it and they can provide more for their family. It's a much different way of life and different way of thinking, but when I see the need for a cow shed or a pig shed, it, it, it hits close to home and my passion is there. So they've got the building, so my hope is we can help them now buy the piglets and to buy the calves so they can help continue to teach these kids. And you should see the faces when we are able to get those photos back from the schools, especially the faces of the students and the families that we serve and the great joy, even in great poverty, the great joy that comes from knowing that they are being educated, the minds and the hearts, in faith. And so that's why I'm so grateful to be able to be here to share with you today the incredible work that our Holy Cross community does in all the places that we serve around the world. They give access to clean water where there previously had not been any. They give access to actually building chapels where they had been meeting under trees and under tents. Very reminiscent of our gospel, right? Let's build three tents, Lord. Well, it starts with that, and, and then we can build the chapels and churches as well in missionary lands. Just imagine the sign that is for a small group of Catholic Christians in an area where they're 0.002% of the population. Imagine the joyful pride they feel when they have a building to go to. And that community around them of Muslims and Hindus see that, no, we are present here. Our God is present here. These folks that live in that dire poverty and are so marginalized, that provides great hope for them. And so one question I ask is kind of where does your passion lie? Knowing that we provide education and health care and all the types of different things of, that we build in Holy Cross, is there something that, that touches your heart? Are you in the medical field or an assistant that you're like, yes, I want to help with that. I can do a small part in that. Or a teacher or administrator, yes, I would like to help with that. Do a small part with that. It transform a community somewhere in the world. So where is your passion? It, it might be for piglets. It might not be. It might be for something else. But if your passion is to understand the global church, the universal church, and to help those in need, I would ask that, that you help with that. Contribute to that. I simply ask that you help in our work, the Congregation of Holy Cross, our brothers and priests and, and sisters, to help us treat the greater community that we serve, those brothers and sisters of faith, with great love. By seeing Jesus in them and showing them his mercy, compassion, and concern that they may feel the great dignity of being loved as a child of God. So my friends, thank you. Thank you for living out your faith here today, living out your faith in your families, living out your faith in your community, and understanding the greater global community, the universal church that is served by missionaries who give their lives to the peoples around the world. So thank you for this. And may God bless you abundantly in your generosity. Let us stand and profess our faith in the only God who can save. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All that is seen and unseen. Believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. the only be Son of God. God the Father before all ages. God, God from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
and substantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For our sins and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, the Spirit was incarnate, incarnate, the Virgin Mary became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. And again, they fulfill the scriptures. Ascended into heaven, seated right at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church, that she may inspire her children to enter this Lenten season with a spirit of prayer, penance, and generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations throughout the world, that they work for lasting peace and mutual respect for human dignity and not be motivated by greed and self-interest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may have the faith of Abraham and have Paul's confidence in God's providence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Kwasinski and Zylokowski families, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions found in our parish book and all our personal intentions, and that our parish may prepare disciples to love the true, the good, and the beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all corruption be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and are replaced by leaders who respect life, the common good, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those candidates and catechumens who are called to be received into the church this coming Easter, that they may be inspired by our example this Lenten season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may come to know the fullness of God's joy in heaven, and that their family and friends be consoled by their hope in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. 